getting warm out here. Feels good too. Sometimes you just need to take the time to relax, take a look around. I'd say smell the roses, but I don't have any. <laughs> But you need to enjoy what God has given you. You need to be thankful for what He has provided in your life. That whether you live in a prosperous way or in a impoverished way, that whether you find yourself in sin or being forgiven or discovering who Jesus is for the first time or for the last time. You need to be thankful for what God has done for you. Because He causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the wicked and the good. And all those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But that process of salvation sometimes brings us through a lot of choices that we have to make to choose to go to the left or the right to choose to do what is wrong or what is right sometimes that costs us friends family relatives neighbors sometimes we gain them back when they likewise too make choices and decide that they would like to have what you have discovered which is a personal living God. Someone who is alive and well and living in you and who is willing to walk with you and to take you all the way through this life into eternity. That's who Jesus is. In Streams in the Desert, the cup which my Father hath given me, shall I not drink? John 18:11. This was a greater thing to say and do than to calm the seas or raise the dead. Prophets and apostles could work wondrous miracles, but they could not always do and suffer the will of God. To do and suffer God's will is still the highest form of faith, the most sublime Christian achievement. To have a bright aspiration of a young life forever blasted, to bear a daily burden never congenial and to see not relief, to be pinched by poverty when you only desire a competency for the good and comfort of loved ones, to be fettered by some incurable physical disability, to be stripped bare of loved ones until you stand alone to meet the shocks of life, to be able to say in such a school of discipline, the cup which my Father has given me, shall I not drink of it? This is faith at its highest and spiritual success at the crowning point. Great faith is exhibited not so much in ability to do something as it is to suffer. To have a sympathizing God, we must have a suffering Savior. And there is no true fellow feeling with another save in the heart of him who has been afflicted in the same way. We cannot do good to others save at a cost to ourselves. And our afflictions are the price we pay for our ability to sympathize. He who would be a helper must first be a sufferer. He who would be a savior must somewhere and somehow have been upon a cross. And we cannot have the highest happiness of life in caring for others without tasting the cup which Jesus drank and submitting to the baptism with which Jesus was baptized. The most comforting of David's psalms were pressed out by suffering. And if Paul had not had his thorn in the flesh, we would have missed much of the tenderness which quivers in so many of his letters. The present circumstance which presses so hard against you, if you have surrendered to Christ, is the best shaped tool in the Father's hand to chisel you for eternity. Trust him then. Do not push away the instrument, lest you lose its work. It's funny, I love Streams in the Desert for that reason, because it always comforts me in my sufferings. And 
I would be lying if I said I wasn't challenged by my day today. As in some ways, whether you can see it or not, I'm, I too am suffering in my own way. And pain is afflicting me and the challenges are always, do I just give up and give in and whine and cry out and stop doing what it is that God has chosen me to do? Or do I say, like in Streams of the Desert, as God has spoken to us, that this cup, though I, in one hand, suffer and have pain and affliction, in the other I hold the chalice of what he would have me to do today, and I say, shall I not drink of it? Shall I not do what it is that God would have me to do? In spite of my pain, Obviously, if I'm here, then you know what I've chosen. If you, in your own way, in your own will, have to choose whether you would go on with God or be still and just sit on your present circumstances and either suffer or choose to suffer the will of God for your life. I know the choice that I have made and I gave up my ability to choose when I made it. Because as for me, whatsoever it is that God brings into my life, that I choose. And I would rather that He do it to me, with me, for me, through me, and abide me, with me in it, than for me to make any decisions that would be contrary to what His will is for my life. I hope you choose the same. Sometimes it even makes the pain a lot easier.